What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's Cybersecurity Weekly, where we review the security events that happened in the last week. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. We start off with phishing. During the three months from mid-May to mid-August 2021, researchers detected a 300% increase in phishing URLs within their own telemetry targeting Chase Bank. Chase was the sixth most targeted brand behind obvious companies as PayPal, Apple, and Facebook. During this period, researchers from Siren, a cloud-based threat intelligence and SaaS company, detected a notable increase in phishing kits designed to mimic the Chase banking portal. Of all the phishing kits collected by Siren over the last six months, Chase is a close second to only Office 365 and well ahead of Microsoft and PayPal. Phishing kits can be purchased from the internet and used by anyone. Typically, they provide the phishing URL complete with the code necessary to steal the victim's details, leaving the buyer to compose and send the phishing email. Ready-made phishing messages can also be purchased, and email addresses of actual or potential Chase customers can be bought separately. Chief among the current kits in use is the Chase XBALTI, and XBALTI has been around for several years, but is currently primarily used against Chase and Amazon. Smishing, or phishing by phone text messages, is particularly popular. Short messages that do not necessarily obey standard grammar are expected by the target, and it is harder to detect disguised URLs. Email messages are longer and more easily expose the poor grammar and typos that often expose malicious emails. The purpose, as with all phishing, is to lure the target into clicking a link that will lead to the phishing URL. In the XBALT example analyzed by Siren, the malicious link leads to a page looking very similar to the genuine Chase site, but hosted on a compromised Brazilian website. A series of separate data entry forms are used to harvest the victim's credentials. Whether it's the financial analyst that wires tens of thousands of dollars to fraudsters, the executive that exposes login credentials, or just the bank customer juggling remote work life, everyone is vulnerable to the attack, said the researcher. We move on to patches. Google released security updates to address a total of four high severity vulnerabilities in the Chrome version for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The most severe vulnerability tracked to CVE 2021-37977 is an after-free issue in garbage collection that could lead to arbitrary code execution. The flaw was reported by an anonymous researcher and Google awarded him a $10,000 bounty payout. Google also addressed two heap buffer overflow vulnerabilities in Blink and WebRTC tracked to CVE 2021-37978 and CVE 2021-37979 respectively. The CVE 2021-37978 Vulnerability was reported by Yank Kang um, at DM Push, Push Me of 360 ATA, while the CVE 2021-37979 was reported by Marcin Towalski of Cisco Talos. Google paid a $10,000 bounty, bounty reward for both vulnerabilities there as well. A fourth high severity issue fixed by Google is an inappropriate implementation in Sandbox tracked as CVE 2021-37980. That was reported by Yong Wei Jin, or at Jinmo123, now rolling out to the desktop users as Chrome version 94.0.4606.81, the new browser iteration also addresses two heap overflow, overflow, overflow vulnerabilities in Blink and the WebRTC, as mentioned before. Security researchers Diaj, Diaj Mishra released an NMAP script for CVE 2021-41773 path traversal vulnerability affecting Apache Web Server version 2.4.49. This week, Apache Software Foundation has released the HTTP Web Server 2.4.51 to address an actively exploited path traversal vulnerability, CVE 2021-41773, that was only partially addressed with a previous release. An attacker can trigger the flow but to map URLs to files outside the expected document root. The vulnerability affects only version 2.4.49, and earlier versions are not impacted. A few days ago, Apache released Apache HTTP 2.4.50 to address it. CVE 2021-41773. 
Immediately after the release of the Apache HTTP 2.4.50, experts disclosed that the exploitation of the flaw could lead to remote code execution when the modern CGI module was loaded and the default require all denied option was missing. Now, the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, or US CERT, warns of ongoing active scanning of Apache HTTP servers for CVE 2021-41773 and CVE 2021-42013 that could lead to imminent exploitation. For this reason, the US CERT urges organizations to immediately patch their installs. We now move on to attacks, vulnerabilities, and updates. In case you've been living on a rock, an anonymous 4chan user has published a torrent link to, uh, to, uh, or link to a 125 gigabyte file on the 4chan discussion board. The leaked archive contains sensitive data, data stolen from 6,000 internal Twitch Git repositories. The leaker, who used the hashtag do better Twitch hashtag, claims to have leaked the data in response to harassment raids targeting the platform streamers this summer. The anonymous user's thread, named Twitch Leaks Part 1, claims that the archive contains the entirety of Twitch.tv, with commit history going back to its early beginnings, mobile, desktop, and video game console clients, various proprietary SDKs and internal AWS services used by platform, every other property that Twitch owns, including IGDB and CurseForge, an unreleased Steam competitor from Amazon Game Studios, Twitch SOC internal red teaming tools, and the creator payout reports from 2019 until now. Now, when they say everything was stolen, they really mean everything. There are Slack channel IDs, scripts that monitor services, puppet modules, QA project code like Terraform, tools, um, Twerk Python, Jenkins uh, job scrapers, internal AWS links and URLs to other resources, and source code for the Twitch service, along with images from their whiteboard showing their internal research about their threat models. Google warns of F28 attack attempts against 14,000 Gmail users. On Wednesday, Google announced to have warned approximately 14,000 Gmail users that they had been targeted by nation-state hackers. Shane Huntley, the head of the Threat Analyst Group, or TAG, wrote on Twitter that his group had sent an above-average batch of government-backed security warnings. The researchers pointed out that the warning is related to hacking attempts and that not all the attacks have been successful, also thanks to the defense implemented by Google. A spike in the number of attacks was observed in late September. Threat Analysis Group researchers uncovered an apt 28 phishing campaign targeting approximately 40,000 Gmail users across multiple businesses. The App28 group, aka Fancy Bear, aka Pawnstorm, aka SofaC Group, aka Sedrit, Sednit, and aka Strontium, has been active since at least 2007 and it has targeted governments, militaries, and security organizations worldwide. The group was involved also in the string of attacks that targeted 2016 presidential election. The group operates out of Military Unity 26165 of the Russian General Staff Main Intelligence Directorate, or GRU, and the 85th Main Special Service Center, GTSSS. Most of AP28's campaigns leveraged spear phishing and malware-based attacks. The specific campaign accounted for 80% of the batch of warnings that the Google team sent out um, that month. Researchers from Mandiant published a detailed report on the activities of a financially motivated ransomware group tracked as Fin12 that has been active since at least October 2018. The vast majority of Fin12 victims have more than 300 million in revenue. According to the researchers, Fin12 is operating out of the Commonwealth of Independent States, or CIS region, and is com composed of Russian-speaking individuals. In most of the attacks, the group employed the Riot ransomware, Experts pointed out that until March 2020, the gang exclusively leveraged TrickBot accesses. Since March, the group temporarily suspended its activities for four months, and when they returned, the group started leveraging other malware, as well as Citrix and RDP login credentials provided by other threat actors in the underground communities. Mandiant researchers noticed that, the, that Fin12 operators uh, in most of the attacks did not spend time stealing information from victim systems before encrypting them. The attackers conduct hit-and-run operations, spending about two and a half days within the victim's network before encrypting the files. The ransomware operators do not implement a double extortion model to reduce the time to ransom. 
known as TTR, that is on average 12.4 days in ransomware attacks. Since late 2019, Fin12 began to use publicly available post-exploiting tools, or post-exploitation tools, such as Empire. Since early 2020, the gang mostly used the Cobalt Strike Beacon and only in limited cases deployed other backdoors. Starting in 2021, the Fin12 group expanded its operations and focused on organizations outside North America, targeting companies in several countries worldwide, including Australia, Colombia, France, Indonesia, Ireland, the Philippines, South Korea, Spain, the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom. The Open Management Infrastructure RPM package in the IBM QRadar Azure Marketplace images is affected by remote code execution vulnerability tracked as CVE 2021-38647. CVE 2021-38647 is one of the four vulnerabilities in the Open Management Infrastructure software collectively tracked as, oh my god, you may remember I did an episode on this, uh, that were first reported by Wiz's research team. Microsoft fixed the flaw with the release of, of September 2021 Patch Tuesday security updates. OMI is an open source project written in C that allows users to manage configurations across environments. It is used in various Azure services, including Azure Automation and Azure Insights. The most severe flaw is a remote code execution flaw tracked as CBA 2021-38647. It received the CBS a score of 9.8, the most severe flaw within the, oh my god, group of four vulnerabilities. In the case of IBM QRadar Azure, a remote attacker can exploit the vulnerability to execute arbitrary code on vulnerable installs. The vulnerability can be triggered by executing a specially crafted program on vulnerable systems. It affects the following versions. IBM QRadar version 7.32, 7.33, patch 9. And IBM QRadar version 7.40 to 7.43, patch 2. Proofpoint researchers have discovered a new Ursniff backing Trojan uh, campaign carried out by a group tracked as TA544 that is targeting organizations in Italy. The experts observed nearly 20 notable campaigns distributing hundreds of thousands of malicious messages targeting Italian organizations. TA544 is a financially motivated threat actor that is active at least, or it has been active at, since at least 2017. It focuses on attacks on banking users. It leverages banking malware and other payloads to target organizations worldwide, mainly in Italy and Japan. Experts pointed out that in the period between January and August 2021, the number of observed Ursniff campaigns impacting Italian organizations was greater than the total number of Ursniff campaigns targeting Italy in all of 2020. The TA544 group leverages phishing and social engineering techniques to lure victims into enabling macro included uh, in weaponized documents. Upon en enabling the macro, the infection process will start. In, most, in the most recent attacks against Italian organizations, the TA544 TA544 group posed as an Italian courier or an energy organization that is soliciting payments from the victims. The spam messages use weaponized office documents to drop the Ursniff banking trojan in the final stage. Cyber Reason Noctumus and Incident Response Teams discovered a new threat actor that is targeting organizations in the aerospace and telecommunications sectors with the Shell Client malware as part of Operation Ghost Shell. Shell Client is previously undocumented and Stealthy Rat, or Remote Access Trojan, used to steal sensitive information from the victims. The threat actors have been targeting the above industries since at least 2018. Operation Ghost Shell is a highly targeted cyber espionage campaign that mainly hits entities in the Middle East, along with other victims in the US, Russia, and Europe. Researchers attributed the campaigns to a new Iran-linked threat actor tracked as Malkamak, which have some connections with the App39 group. The experts first discovered the shell client rat during an investigation into an incident in July. The analysis of the malware employed in the recent Operation Ghost Shell revealed it was compiled on May 20, 22, 2021. Now, the first version of the rat is dated back to 2018. It was a simple standalone reverse shell. Across the years, or over the years, the malware evolved and its authors implemented new functionality, such as code obfuscation improvements, the use of um, Costura Pecker, and new persistence methods. According to the experts, the PBB, PDB path embedded in, this, in some of the shell client samples suggests that the rat is part of a restricted or classified project that could be related to military or intelligence agency operations. 
The UK newspaper, The Telegraph, one of the UK's largest newspapers and online media outlets, has leaked 10 terabytes of data after failing to properly secure one of its databases. The popular researcher Bob Diachenko discovered an unprotected 10 terabyte database belonging to the UK newspapers of The Telegraph. The unsecured database was discovered on September 14, 2021, and included internal logs and subscriber information. The data was stored on an exposed Elasticsearch cluster. Most of the data were encrypted, but personal details of at least 1,200 Telegraph subscribers and registrants were in clear te text, along with a huge trove of internal server logs. Subscriber data exposed includes full names, email addresses, device information, URL requests, IP addresses, authentication tokens, and unique reader identifiers. The database also included some Apple News subscribers or registrants' passwords. Diachenko notified the Telegraph the day it discovered the unsecured database. Two days later, on September 16, 2021, after not receiving a response, he shared the news via Twitter. Now, the newspaper's security team did uh, um, secure the data once they saw the tweet, apparently. ESET researchers spotted a previously unknown modular Linux malware dubbed Fonten Lake that was employed in targeted attacks on organizations in Southeast Asia. According to the experts, modules of this malware family are under development and continuously improved. Malicious code was used by the threat actors to collect credentials from infected systems and acts as a proxy server. Fonton Lake is always accompanied by a rootkit to conceal its existence. The components used by the malware can be divided into three, uh, into the three following groups that interact with each other. Trojanized applications, modified legitimate binaries that are adjusted to load further components, collect data, and conduct or conduct other malicious activities. Backdoors, user mo uh, mode components serving as the main point of communication for its operators. Then come rootkits. Kernel mode components that mostly hide and disguise their presence, um, assist with updates, or provide fallback backdoors. The first Fountain Lake sample was spotted by the researchers in May 2020, but other samples were discovered throughout the year. Other researchers' teams also analyzed the same threat, including the Tension Security Response Center, AVAST, and Lacework Labs. All the samples detected by the researchers used unique command and control servers with varying non standard ports to remain under the radar. At the time of the writing of the report, the command and control servers used in samples uploaded to VirusTotal were not active, likely because the operators had disabled them after they were discovered. The experts discovered um, and identified multiple Trojanized applications that are used to load custom backdoor or rootkit modules. The malicious code was also able to collect sensitive data from infected systems. ESET researchers discovered three different backdoors all written in C++, and all use the same SIO library from Boost. The authors also used other third-party libraries such as Poco and Protobuf. Now, the first backdoor was used to launch and mediate access to a local SSH server, update itself, and send to the command and control server the stolen credentials. The second backdoor implements similar features. It allows operators to exfiltrate credentials, provide access to a customized SSHD, and serves as a proxy. The researchers noticed that the backdoor is also capable of file manipulation, updating itself, listing directories, and uploading and downloading files. The third backdoor also allows data exfiltration from infected systems. It also accepts remote connections, serves as a proxy, and can download and run Python scripts. Lockbit 2.0 ransomware operators hit the Israeli aerospace and defense firm Emit Aviation Consulting Limited. Threat actors claim to have stolen data from the company and are threatening or threatened to leak them on the dark web uh, leak site of the group in case the company did not pay the ransom. Emit Aviation Consulting Limited was founded in 1986. The company designs and assembles complete aircraft, tactical and sub-tactical UAV systems, and mobile integrated reconnaissance systems. At the time of the writing, the ransomware gang um, had yet to share any files as proof of the attack, and the countdown ended on the 7th of October 2021. It's not clear how the threat actors breached the company and when the security breach took place. The list of recent victims for Lockbit 2.0 uh, includes Riviana, Wormington and Bell Bollinger, Anasia Group, Vlastwin Group, SCIS, Air Security, Peabody Properties, Data Speed S SRL, Island Independent Buying Group, Day Lewis, Buffington Law Firm, and many other companies worldwide. Experts warn of the availability of proof-of-concept exploit code for a couple of authentication bypass vulnerabilities in Daohua cameras tracked as CV2021-33044 and CV2021-33045. A remote attacker 
can exploit both vulnerabilities by sending specially crafted data packets to the vulnerable cameras. The flaw received a CVSS version 3 score of 8.1. The vendor recommended its customers to install security updates. It could be quite easy for threat actors in the wild to find an exposed Daohua devices using a search engine like Shodan and attempt to hack them using the available POC code. In order to protect Dahua de devices, users have to install the latest firmware version. Researchers from security firm Intizer have discovered many misconfigured Apache Airflow servers exposed online that were leaking sensitive information, including credentials from several tech companies. Experts analyzed the misconfiguration risks for organizations and their customers. They also provided details of the common causes for data leakage from vulnerable instances. Intizer researchers determined that most of the leaked credentials are exposed through insecure coding practices. Many of the impacted instances have hard-coded passwords inside the Python DAG code. Other misconfigured installs analyzed by Intuzer had a publicly accessible configuration file, airflow.config, that contains secret information, including passwords and keys. Threat actors could also change the configuration, causing unexpected behavior. The credentials could also be leaked through the airflow variables that are used across the AG scripts. Experts explained that it is quite common to find hard-coded passwords stored in these variables. Agent Tesla, first discovered in late 2014, is an extremely popular malware-as-a-service remote access Trojan tool used by threat actors to steal information such as credentials, keystrokes, clipboard data, and other information from its operators' targets. Both cybercriminal groups and actors involved in espionage operations use this rat due to uh, Agent Tesla's stability, flexibility, and functionality that allows for the collection of sensitive data and exfiltration from the victim. Los Angeles-based Risk Security Incorporated and its Cyber Threat Intelligence and R&D unit, Hunter, drained the Agent Tesla Command and Control servers and extracted over 950 gigabytes of logs containing compromised internet users' credentials, files, and other sensitive information stolen by malicious code. The data extraction was made possible through a collaboration with RE Security, or Resecurity, law enforcement, and several ISPs in the European Union, Middle East, and North America. But collected information allowed for the recovery of knowledge about the victims and the timeline of the campaigns conducted by actors uh, leveraging Agent Tesla. The distribution of victims per geography area included USA, Canada, Italy, Germany, Spain, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Brazil, Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, Taiwan, Japan, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and other countries in the Gulf region. The majority of intercepted credentials by Agent Tesla related to financial services, online retailers, e-government systems, and personal and business email accounts. Researchers found active instances of Agent Tesla and developed a mechanism to enumerate the affected clients and extract compromised data. To share knowledge and encourage information security researchers to combat malicious code, ReSecurity's Hunter unit has prepared an educational video demonstrating the .NET reverse engineering and de-obfuscation techniques used for the Agent Tesla analysis. A new ransomware operator is targeting Confluence servers by using a recently disclosed vulnerability to obtain initial access to vulnerable systems. According to Software Cybersecurity, researchers Sean Gallagher and Vika Singh, the new threat actors dubbed Adam Silo, are taking advantage of the flaw in the hopes that Confluence server owners are yet to apply the required security updates to resolve the bug. Atlassian Confluence is a web-based virtual workplace for the enterprise, allowing teams to communicate and collaborate on projects. Sophos described a recent attack conducted at, by Adam Silo over a period of two days. The vulnerability used in the attack, tracked as CVE 2021-0825, allowed the cyber criminals to obtain initial access to the victim's corporate environment. The Confluence vulnerability is being actively exploited in the wild. While fixed in August, the vendor warned that Confluence Server and Confluence Data Center are at risk and should be patched immediately. If exploited, unauthenticated threat actors are able to perform an OGNL injection attack and execute arbitrary code. CVE 2021-0825 was used to compromise the Jenkins project in September, if you recall. I did an episode on that. US Cybercom said in the same month that attacks were ongoing and expected to accelerate. In the case examined by Sophos, Adam Silo utilized the vulnerability on September 13th and was able to use the code injection bug to create a backdoor, leading to the download and execution of a second stealthy backdoor. To stay under the radar, this payload dropped a legitimate and signed piece of software vulnerable to an unsigned DLL sideload attack. A malicious .dll was then used to decrypt and load the backdoor from a separate file containing code similar to a Cobalt Strike beacon. 
creating a tunnel for remotely executing Windows shell commands through WMI. Within a, a matter of hours, Adam Silo began moving laterally across its Vixen network, compromising multiple servers in the process and executing the same backdoor binaries on each while also conducting additional reconnaissance. 11 days after its initial intrusion, ransomware and a malicious kernel driver utility payload designed to disrupt endpoint protection were then deployed. Separately, another threat actor noticed the same system was vulnerable to CVE 2210825 and quietly implanted cryptocurrency mining software. The ransomware is virtually identical to Lockfile. Files were encrypted using the .atom silo extension and a ransomware note demanding $200,000 was then dropped on the victim system. Security researchers from Cybersecurity Research Center in the Ben Gurion University of the Negev Israeli uh, of Negev Israel is Israel devised a new data exfiltration mechanism dubbed Lantenna Attack that leverages Ethernet cables as a transmitting antenna to steal sensitive data from air-gapped systems. The research group, led by Dr. Morder Morda Mordecai Guri, explained that data siphoned from air-gapped systems are encoded over radio waves in emanating from Ethernet cables. Then data can be intercepted by a nearby software-defined radio receiver wirelessly decoded and sent to an attacker who is in an adjacent room. The experts explain that often air gap networks are wired with Ethernet cables since wireless connections are strictly prohibited to avoid data leaks. The researchers used malware to exfiltrate collected data, modulating it, and transmitting wirelessly via the radio waves emanating from the Ethernet cables. The electromagnetic emissions are generated by the Ethernet cable in the frequency bands of 125 MHz that can be intercepted by a nearby radio receiver. In a test conducted by the researchers, data exfiltrated from an air-gapped computer was transmitted through the internet Ethernet cable and was received at a distance of 200 centimeters apart. In a read attack scenario, threat actors have to physically compromise the air-gapped system, for example, by leveraging a malicious insider or tricking personal personnel with access to the system into con connecting an infected USB drive. The researchers used malware to exfiltrate con collected data, modulating it, and transmitting wirelessly via the radio waves emanating from the Ethernet cables. The researchers proposed several defensive measures that can be adopted against the Lantenna attack, such as implementing zone separation, banning radio receive, uh, receiver from the area of air gap networks, monitoring the network interface card link active activity at the user and kernel levels, any change of the link state should trigger an alert, using RF monitoring hardware equipment to identify anomalies in the Lantenna frequency bands, blocking the covert channel by jamming the Lantenna frequency uh, bands, and cable shielding. Researchers from Sophos were investigating a ransomware attack when they discovered that the attackers employed a Python script to encrypt virtual machines hosted on VMware ESXi servers. In the attack investigated by the experts, ransomware operators encrypted the virtual disks in a VMware ESXi server only three hours after the initial intrusion. The intruders gained access to the network by logging into a TeamViewer account running on a device with a domain admin logged on. Then the attackers used the advanced IP scanner to scan the network and to identify other targets. Then they logged onto an uh, ESXi server using an SSH client called Bitvis. In this case, the IT administrators at the victim organization left SSH ESXi shell service enabled, opening the door to the attackers. The ransomware operators then executed a tiny Python script, it's only 6 kilobytes uh, in size, to encrypt all virtual disks and VM settings files of the virtual machines hosted on the server. Forensic experts were able to recover a copy of the Python script, Python script and discovered that attackers can set up a set of variables to configure multiple encryption keys, email addresses, and chose, choose the file suffix for the encrypted files. Attackers first shut down the virtual machines, they overwrote the content of the original file stored on the data store and volumes to prevent victims from recovering them. Then they deleted the virtual uh, VM disks. Initially, the script walks the file system of a data store and creates a directory map of the device of the drive and inventories the names of every virtual machine on the hypervisor, writing them to a file called vms.txt. It then executes the ESXi shell, command vim-cmd, vmsvc, to power off, one time for each virtual machine, passing the VM names to the command as a variable, one at a time. Only when the VMs have powered off will the script begin encrypting the data store volumes, states the analysis. Using a single instruction for each file in encrypts, the script invokes the open source tool OpenSSL to encrypt the files with the following command, or with a Python command, or with a command. The script 
then overwrites the contents of the original file with just the word F-U-C-K, then deletes the original file. Finally, it deletes the files that contain the directory listings, the names of the VMs, and itself by overriding those files before deleting them. Experts notice that this ransomware creates a unique key pair every time it's run. Unfortunately, attacks against the SXI servers are becoming frequent. Multiple ransomware gangs target them, including Black Matter, RansomX, Hello Kitty, Revel, and Bevook Locker. Camel Gang is a new apt group that was first spotted in March by researchers at security firm Positive Technologies. It targets Russian companies in the energy and aviation industry. In March, the cyber espionage group was observed leveraging proxy shell against targets in 10 countries and used a variety of malware in its campaign. Now the group is targeting organizations in Russia by exploiting known vulnerabilities like Microsoft Exchange proxy shells issues. It also used a new set of malware to exfiltrate sensitive information from target networks. The name Camel Gang comes from the word chameleon that was used because the group disguised its malware and network infrastructure under legitimate services of Microsoft, Trend Micro, McAfee, IBM, and Google. The threat actors used domains mimicking legitimate ones, newtrendmicro.com, centralgoogle.com, microsoft-support.net, cdn-chrome.com, mcafee-upgrade.com, and installed SSL certificates on the servers that Im imitated legitimate ones, github.com, ibm.com, jquery.com, update microsoft.support.net on its servers. Experts pointed out that the Camel Gang group was also involved in supply chain attacks in order to hit the actual victims. The analysis of the techniques used by the threat actors revealed that the Camel Gang group used both known malicious software like FRP, Cobalt Strike Beacon, and Tiny Shell, and previously undetected malware tracked as Proxy T, Beacon Loader, and the Dormy Backdoor. Positive Technologies experts investigated two attacks conducted by AFT that took place in March and August, respectively. Medtronics is urgently Medtronic is urgently recalling remote controllers for insulin pumps belonging to the Minimed Paradigm family of products due to severe cybersecurity risks. The controllers that should be returned to the vendor are models MMT500 and MMT503, used with Medtronic Minimed 508 insulin pump and the Minimed Paradigm family of insulin pumps. These devices were sold in the United States between August 1999 and July 2018, and it is estimated that there are 31,310 vulnerable units in use by diabetic patients in the country at the moment. The problem with these older remotes is that an unauthorized person could potentially record and replay the wireless communication signal that is generated when the user presses a button on the controller, sending commands directly to the insulin pump. In this way, someone could purposefully over-deliver or stop the delivery of insulin to the patient. For some people who suffer from severe diabetes, going through hyperglycemia or ketoacidosis even shortly could lead to their death. Medtronic told Beeping Computer that there are no confirmed reports of a remote controller being manipulated in this manner. Cyber news researchers found an exposed configuration file hosted on a sky.com subdomain containing what appeared to be production level database access credentials, as well as addresses out to development and endpoints. Sky, a subsidiary of Comcast, is Europe's largest media company, boasting a 12% market share and a revenue of approximately £13.4 billion in 2020, as well as more than 31,000 employees and 24 million customers. Uplift Media, launched by Sky and Molson Coors in 2015, is an in-venue digital screen advertising network that operates digital screens in bars and other leisure venues across the UK. During a threat intelligence gathering operation, uh, the investigations team came across an exposed configuration file that included plain text access credentials to multiple databases on a domain hosted by the Sky Media conglomerate. The configuration file, first indexed on an IoT search engine on September 7th, appears to be the main configuration file for the application hosted on the Uplift Media to subdomain of Sky.com, and includes plain text access credentials to databases hosted on the Sky.com domain. After Cyber News reported the issue to Sky on October 8th, a company representative from Forbes Cyber News that Sky was, has taken action to address the issue. Access to the configuration file has now been disabled. The unsecured configuration file appeared to contain, among other things, production-level access credentials, including passwords in plain text, to databases hosted on Sky.com subdomain from localhost, development branch, to Windows Server production branch. IP addresses and domain names that lead to development endpoints, specialized environments used by developers for testing and iteration. 
While it's unclear if any malicious actors or security researchers have access to the configuration file before it was secured by Sky, the file itself was presumably indexed by the IoT search engine for at least 30 days prior to its publication. Anyone who knew where to look could have accessed the data during that period and abused the authentication credentials found in the configuration file. The American media conglomerate Cox Media Group announced it was hit by a ransomware attack that caused the interruption of the live TV and radio broadcasting streams in June 2021. The company notified via mail hundreds of individuals that were impacted by the security breach and that have had their personal data exposed in the attack. CMG immediately launched an investigation with the support of law enforcement. It also hired leading cybersecurity experts to determine the extent of the attack. The company confirmed that it did not pay a ransom. Cox Media Group discovered the security breach the same day of the initial intrusion and immediately took down systems off, uh, took systems offline to avoid the pro propagation of the threat. The company recently determined that the threat actor tried, without success, to remove copies of certain HR files on the server. According to the breach notification, personal information potentially exposed includes names, addresses, social security numbers, financial account numbers, health security, health insurance information, health insurance policy numbers, medical condition information, medical diagnosis information, and online user credentials stored for the purpose of human resource management. Cityverse is a global company that provides technology and business services for a number of telecommunications companies, as well as a variety of other multinational enterprises. The company is, is a privileged target for threat actors that could hit the firm to access their customers' information. Cineverse provides text messaging routing services to hundreds of mobile operators, including AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Telefonica, China Mobile, and Vodafone. It also offers services to giant tech giants and major financial institutions. It processes billions of text messages. Cineverse disclosed a security breach. Threat actors have had access to its databases since 2016, according to a motherboard that first reported the news potentially millions of cell phone users worldwide were impacted. In a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, the company states that an unauthorized party accessed on several occasions databases on its network. The security breach was only discovered May, on May 20, uh, in May 2021, five years after the alleged first intrusion. The company has launched an internal investigation to determine the extent of the security breach. According to the company, threat actors compromised login credentials for approximately 235 of its customers. In response to the incident, Cineverse notified EDT customers and uh, reset inactivated and inactivated their credentials. Five years is a long period, and the fact that threat actors operated to remain under the radar suggests they were involved in a long-running cyber espionage operation. We move on to other security news. Users worldwide are not able to access Facebook or were not able to access Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp services due to a BGP problem. Users attempting to visit the above services were displayed with DNS probe finished and next domain. The mobile applications of the social network giant and its Tor hidden services are also were also not working. At the time of the writing, it was unclear if the outage was the result of a technical issue or if it was the result of a cyber attack against the infrastructure of the social network giant. Now, John Graham Cumming, CTO at Cloudflare, reported that some minutes before Facebook's DNS outage began, they observed a large number of VGP changes to Facebook's ASN and, and circumstances that suggest B BGP routing problems. The expert also warned of a massive flood of DNS traffic asking for Facebook.com. Now, it ended up being that it was a flawed upgrade of some of their DNS settings and um, their routing uh, uh, settings, which caused not only their services like WhatsApp, Facebook, um, and, and other properties to be down, but also caused um, a lot of their employees to not even be able to access the office to try to fix it. Microsoft revealed that most of the cyber attacks on U.S. government agencies are orchestrated by Russia-linked cyber espionage groups. According to the IT giant, approximately 58% of all nation-state attacks between July 2020 and June 2021 were launched by Russian nation-state actors. According to Microsoft, Russian nation-state actors mainly targeted entities in the United States, Ukraine, and the UK. According to the report published by Microsoft, the Russia-linked Nobelium app is responsible for 92% of the notifications to customers about Russia-based threat activity. Other nation-state groups that were very active between July 2020 and June 2021 are Thallium and Phosphorus apt groups. The analysis of attacks by countries of origin revealed that North Korea accounted for 20% of the attacks, followed by Iran with 23% of the attacks, and China with 22% of the attacks. Microsoft, Microsoft revealed that to have 
uh, revealed to have sent a total of 20,500 notifications of hacking attempts by all nation state actors to its customers in the past three years. The Dutch government announced that it will not tolerate cyber attacks that pose a risk to its national security and will employ intelligence or military services to counter them. Cyber espionage and sabotage attacks and also ransomware attacks against critical infrastructure and government offices will trigger the response of the Dutch authorities, explained the Ben Knappen, Dutch ministry, Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Dutch minister added that the response to severe cyber attacks could be escalated. An attack against a critical response will require the rapid reply of the cyber defense, a response that disregards diplomatic relations between the countries involved. Knappen highlighted the difficulty of attribu attributing a ransomware operation to a specific threat actor. It explained that it is very complex to demonstrate that a non-state actor carries out the operation on the explicit instruction of or under the control of a state. As a result, the legal attribution of an, of an act of non-state actor to a state is usually not easy. Now, the approach announced by the Dutch government is the same proposed by, the state, by other states, such as the United States and the UK. Both governments announced that uh, they will use any means, including cyber offensive capabilities, to destroy ransomware operations that threaten national security. The governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey, has launched a cyber command center to repel the huge amount of attacks that every day hit the computer systems of the state. The move is the response of the Arizona uh, administration to hundreds of thousands of cyber attacks that hit the state. At a ceremony Monday at the Department of Public Safety's Arizona Counterterrorism Information Center in Phoenix, Ducey explained that Cyber Command Center has been established to protect the IT infrastructure of the state. In the case of a severe cyber attack, experts at the center will coordinate the incident response activities. The dark web marketplace White House Market shuts down its operation. The announcement was published on a Dread forum. The admin of White House Market, Mr. White, explained that it has decided to halt the operation because he has reached his goal, likely in terms of profits. The black marketplace uh, was launched in February 2019. It was one of the few black marketplaces uh, that initially accepted only payment in Monero. It operated both on Tor and I2P networks. The White House market focused on narcotics, but it was also offering other illegal products, including malware, payment card data, and weapons. In September 2020, it became the biggest dark web market after Empire's exit scam on, a, on February 2020 when it reached half a million registered users. The marketplace doesn't accept new registrations and new listings. Anyway, users can still withdraw funds, but won't be able to place new orders. With that, I say thanks for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already. And smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Don't forget to run.